welcome to Wired to Hunt's unconventional wisdom, where we take one commonly held deer hunting belief and examine an unexpected alternative. I'm gonna address a little topic, a little bit divisive in the whitetail hunting community. It's about hunting bottoms and what happens with the wind. Now Mark and I walked in here, I looked around and I said, man, I like this spot, I would hunt here all day. He looked around and said, there's no way I would hunt here because the wind's gonna swirl, I'm gonna get busted. And the reality is, you just don't know. You could find this in so many different places where agriculture is produced because the tops where it's nice, nice land and easy to drive a tractor in, that's all for crop production. And anything that isn't very easy to drive a tractor in and work the land, like this bottom with these bluffs and these limestone cliffs and this drainage, this is where the deer move in. And you can find this so many places where whitetails live. And so Mark says, can't do it, it's gonna swirl too much. And I say, maybe. Cool thing about these kind of spots, there's a lot of good stand trees. In this particular property, there's a bunch of places to set up on the ground and tuck in where you can mitigate some of that wind risk. And so you have options. So the thing about this kind of a hunting situation is it's just risk versus reward. You're certainly taking some kind of risk with the wind, especially depending on direction, depending on wind speed, but that's gonna change from being up here versus being down there. As it gets lower behind me there, there's a couple places where fingers come in and it opens up and widens out a little bit. That wind's gonna react differently in each one of these spots. If you make up your mind and go, I absolutely can't hunt that entire draw, you're taking out the best whitetail cover here. So what's really gonna be the key to hunting this is paying attention to what's the wind doing now, what's the wind supposed to be doing three hours from now, and then checking it off and letting that milkweed fuzz float through there and making sure you're okay. Typically in these situations, the higher up you get, your cover starts to terminate. The lower you get, you get more cover. If the wind's blowing down into there, generally not as good. But if it's blowing up, out toward the more sparser cover in the fingers, you can usually have a better hunt then. It might be going across and sucking right down into there and really messing with you, but if it's you know, 15, 20, 25 mile per hour sustained winds, it might be blowing right over the top and give you a real chance to set up on one side or the other. And so all of this stuff is so variable on the conditions, and that includes the thermals in here too. You know, you might get an all day rut sit going where until maybe, you know, 3.30 in the afternoon, you've had perfect wind. And all of a sudden it starts to cool off and just suck right down in there where those bucks might be cruising. And so you might have to pay attention to stuff like that, but it might be a half day hunt, or it might be an only a uh, north wind, or it might be an only a west wind, but there's probably some options in there in terrain like this for you to get in and have a good hunt. Make a calculated assessment of it. You know, I'm not saying just go into a spot like this and just cross your fingers, but also don't come into this kind of situation and say, there's no way I could hunt that because you just don't know until you get in there and you give it a real go. If you want more whitetail hunting advice, please listen to the Wired to Hunt podcast and the Wired to Hunt Foundations podcast, and we'll give you everything you needed to hear about deer.